appreciate that very much. Thank you. It's great to be here at, in Rockford, Illinois, on the day before what can be a very big and surprising day here. <laughs>
That is this present. Believe, look, listen to the speeches that he gives. They are right out of the old book of those on the left. The countries not just here in America, but from around the world. Who believe that the American experiment was a failure. Listen to the president's speech in Kansas. He talks about how free enterprise system doesn't work. It leads to great inequality. And how individualism is a failure and focuses too much on greed. So the president looks in America in the rear of the year and sees something very different. Than, well, the Ronald Reagan, that most Americans, Americans <coughs> believe that we are the greatest country in the history of the world. And we were from our founding, not just for the last half dozen years. But America is a great country because we were founded. We were founded on the basic principles. God-given rights. Rights don't come from the government. They come from God. <laughs> and it's absolutely almost, uh, it's just incredible, the, the one bill that drove me into this race. The one thing that President Obama did that, that really changed, the, I think, the dynamic in this country was, of course, Obamacare. And Obamacare will, I believe, change America for good. Margaret Thatcher, when she was Prime Minister of England, she said that she was never able to accomplish in transforming America back from the conviction, from the liberal march to socialism in the 60s and 70s. She was never able to transform the UK the way Reagan did America. And she said the reason for that was the British national health care system. And she said once people would became dependent upon the federal government for their health and their life, then freedom as we know it is extinguished. Because there is no amount of money that the government can't exact from you. No tribute you won't pay to make sure that your children, you and your family, get the care that they believe they need. And once government has you, and you're dependent upon them, then freedom as we know it is gone. The reason we are in this race, that Karen and I, and we have seven children, and ages three to 20, not exactly the best time to be out of running for president of the United States. <laughs> we homeschool our family, we believe that, make, oh, okay, let's give a shout out for <laughs> I believe the most important job I have is being a husband and father, and it was a tough decision to go out on the road as I have almost every day but five in the last almost year now. We've been out on the road because I believe the best thing I can do as a husband and father is, pres is preserve liberty. And with Obamacare... <laughs> with Obamacare, we have a bill. We have a, a movement in this country that will deny that. And I looked at the field of folks who were going to run for president. I looked at the leading candidate for president on the Republican side. And I said, he can't be the nominee. He can't be the nominee because he would take away from the Republican Party in this crucial election, the most important in your lifetime. He would take away the central issue in this campaign. He is uniquely disqualified to go out and make the case against Obamacare. Because he developed the blueprint for Obamacare. We can't have someone who advocated for what President Obama did be our candidate to take him on. There was a poll taken today. It was on Don and Roma's show this morning. And they told us that there was an ABC News poll that said that 67% of Americans disagree with Obamacare and the mandate. 67%. There was a similar poll taken just a month ago in the swing states, about a dozen swing states in this country. 
and 75% of swing state voters disagreed with Obama's hearing. So why Illinois? Why Illinois would you consider voting for someone for president on the Republican side who was for Romney Care, the blueprint for Obamacare, and for government mandates? Why would we give that issue away? Why would we turn an issue that is the most salient issue in this election about fundamental freedom for our country that we can use to show Obama's grand plan for America and government control of our lives, of crushing our economic freedoms and our ability to contract with whoever we want for health care or health policies or with our employer individually, and then go further and crush our religious freedom by forcing people to do things that are against their religious convictions. Oh. As Governor Romney did. When he was governor of Massachusetts, he forced Catholic hospitals to provide the morning after pill on abortive patients that caused abortions. We give every single important issue on this subject matter away. There is no difference between the two. In fact, what President Obama can do is point out the failure of Romney Care and the poor design of his program, as opposed to pointing out the failure and the economic catastrophe that Obamacare would be in our country. <laughs> this race is about big things. This race is about how we're going to get this economy going. I, I heard Governor Romney here call me a, an economic lightweight because I wasn't a Wall Street financier like he was. Do you really believe this country wants to elect a Wall Street financier as the President of the United States? Do you think that's the kind of experience we need? Someone, someone who's going to take and look after, as he did, his friends on Wall Street and bail them out at the expense of Main Street America? We think we want someone who was governor of Massachusetts, had a job creation record. It wasn't the worst. It was third from the worst. <laughs> 47 out of 50. You hear him talk about, oh, I created jobs in the private sector. But he didn't do anything in Massachusetts to create an environment for jobs. Why? Because he exploded the size and scale of government in Massachusetts. Something exactly the opposite of what this country needs right now. I may be, I may have less than experience in Wall Street than Governor Romney does. But my experience in the private sector was helping to manage a small technology company after I left the United States Senate. I worked three years on it. We didn't succeed. We fought through a very tough economic time, but you know what? It was a great experience for me. One of the things I, I found in life you learn a lot more from your failures than you do from your successes. <laughs> and like most Americans, I've had my, fa my failures. Lost re-election, had a business that we tried to get off the ground, not succeed. We've had personal losses in our own family like I know many of you have. We've all gone through difficult times. That makes you stronger and better. My experience is, well, maybe a little different. See, I've experienced, I've seen the effect, the harmful effect of government. And I went out and tried to reform government, cut back government, not grow it like Governor Rob. We went out and tried to reform the welfare and entitlement system. I took on the sacred cows of Medicare and Social Security. I went out there in, in the second oldest state per capita in the country, Pennsylvania, talked about how we need to reform all of our entitlement programs to make sure that they were there for the next generation of seniors who truly needed those programs. You don't do that. You don't do that unless you have the courage of your convictions to go out and do what's right for America instead of playing politics and just promising people things that we can't deliver, which is what this president is an expert. We need to Someone who's going to stand up and fight for the 
for the future of our country and for future generations. And of course, fight for the limited government, as that gentleman just said. And I carry around in my pocket this little document that for a long time in America was a dead letter, and that is the United States Constitution. <laughs>
with a hostage crisis and a radical theocracy taking control as a president sat in the Oval Office twiddling his thumbs as they took over a government. And now this radical theocracy has reared its ugly head again, trying to produce a nuclear weapon, not just to threaten Israel, not just to threaten the Jewish people, which they have specifically said, who will wipe out the cancer of Israel and specifically target Jews of Israel. And you see the president who gets up and proudly says, I'd have Israel back. And the uh, Prime Minister of England, the very, the Prime Minister of, of Israel, the very next day on the very same podium in Washington, D.C., a week a little over a week ago, stood up and said, Time has come, Mr. President. We have waited long enough. Iran has now enriched uranium from 20% to 20%, far beyond what's necessary for nuclear power. They have 40 locations all over the country, all heavily bunkered and armored to resist attack. Why would you do that if you're just building nuclear power plants? They have sent threatening messages to Israel. They will wipe them and destroy them. They're on the precipice of having a ballistic missile capability to be able to deliver their weapons all throughout the region. And yet, this president and his chief of staff says, we're not sure that, a, that Iran is committed yet to development. The American people deserve the truth from their president. Not diplomacy, not whistling through the graveyard at night hoping for the best. They need honesty from the president, and they're not getting it from this president. <laughs> I went up to the that very same stage the day following the Prime Minister of Israel and said, President Obama, you don't have Israel's back. You have turned your back on the people of Israel. What he's done is continue to appease. We're now in negotiations with Iran. I hope that makes you feel comfortable that they're actually going to negotiate with us and stop their nuclear program that they have been doing for the better part of the last dozen years. That Barack Obama, who promised, by the way, if you recall, that he was going to lower sea levels. <laughs> make radical Islamists who are intent on destroying the, the state of Israel, spreading their radical jihadism throughout the region and throughout the world. But somehow or another, his charm is going to stop them from their religious zealotry. Because the president will go and say, oh, we're, we're sorry if we offended you. Back in 1980 or 1979 or whatever else we may have that's what the president sees as the problem, that the United States is the problem, that we are the ones who caused all these problems. This is what the left says all the time. That if we were just out of the region, if we left everybody alone, they'd be nice to us. <laughs> this is not naive. This is dangerous. It's a complete misunderstanding of the evidence. We need someone who served eight years on the Armed Services Committee, who led the charge over the last eight years in focusing the Congress on the issue of Iran and the nuclear weapons. Someone who has experience to be Commander-in-Chief. Someone who has the experience to go out and direct foreign policy and is the one commercial from the last campaign at that phone rings at three in the morning. will understand what's at stake and what America must do to protect our freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, I have that experience. I've been a leader on the issue of supporting not just the state of Israel, but going after and trying to prevent a war in Iran. For eight years I've tried to prevent a war by engaging the Persian people. The Iranians are not Arabs, they're Persians. Go to your Bible, they do not hate the Jews. It's these radicals who are in charge, who are trying to appeal, appeal to the Muslim, the radical Muslim world. But it's not the Iranian people. I've known this for better, about a decade. I've been working to try to develop that relationship, and this president 
has turned his back on them as well. Now we're in a situation that is almost untenable. Iran will develop a nuclear weapon. Without question, they will develop a nuclear weapon. It will be now, between now and when the president, between now and the next election, January, or if not then, if President Obama is re-elected, they will develop it shortly thereafter. And we will sit and watch a great destruction happen in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a president, and a presidential nominee who cannot just take Barack Obama on a health care, cap and trade, government control of your life, and the lack of freedom in America, oppressive government regulation that's killing our economy and our energy policy. And someone who could go out on maybe, might, might, but very well might be the biggest issue of the day come November. And that is a, you know, Iran on the precipice of a nuclear weapon. Be able to take it to the present on all fronts. Folks, that's why I'm running for president. Because we present the best contracts. People in 10 states have figured out in spite of all the negative ads pounding and pounding away of mostly minutia in a, in a public record, that we need someone who can present a clear contrast with this president. Someone who can go out and paint a hopeful and optimistic vision. Someone who believes in peace through strength, strong national defense, not cutting and ripping it apart like this president. Someone who believes the American people and their ability to provide for themselves, to be able to govern their own health care, to develop energy safely and to leave in states and localities, and yes, even the business community, and farmers and ranchers who care about their land more than government bureaucrats. That's the vision of America. The vision of America that says we believe in our founding principles. We believe that America was a great country because it was built with a limited federal government free people from the bottom up. <laughs> we talked about how we have God-given rights, and of course, that statement comes from the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution is a great document. It's not read in the context of the Declaration. The Constitution is the how of America. The Declaration is the why. It's what unites <laughs> People have asked me, how are you going to bring America back together? How about we start at a common point where we all agree? Instead of having the President goes out and continually tries to divide America, the 99 and the 1, and this group against another group, go out there and, and do something I've never seen a president do. Go out and take on individual members of the other party and hold them up for scorn. Criticize them and criticize the party instead of trying to govern and unite Republicans and Democrats together. Place partisan politics 24-7. He doesn't focus on what unites us. He focuses on what divides. That's why we can get to partisan, bipartisan accords, ever. Not one serious bipartisan accord in almost four years of this president who was supposed to be this transformational figure. Why? Because he never focuses on what brings us together. What brings us together is what makes us an American. What makes us American. I tend here at the Venetian Society that I'm an Italian American. I'm very proud to be an Italian American.
out of many one. And Americans, even though we are diverse, the greatness of America is not our diversity. Oh, that's important. But the greatness of America is that in spite of our diversity, we can come together and be one. just declaring our, our, our independence, which is enough. Saying that rights don't go to the king, to the king to spread the wealth around. No. They said we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their <laughs> research and able to the end of that declaration, our founders wrote this, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our safety. We're willing to put it all on the line for what seemed to be hopeless and hopeless cause. Defeating the British Army, the British Navy. The most powerful the military in the world who we are a ragtag group of volunteers. Yet, wealthiest and most influential people in America signed their lives for something that was just a hope. <coughs> we can be different than any other place in the world. By doing so, we can transform. Make no doubt about it, folks, we have transformed the world. If the President of the United States says he doesn't believe in American exceptions. He says America was not a great country until we had government programs and redistributed wealth, and that's what he did say. We have been a great country from our founding. We transformed the world at the time of our founding. Life expectancy in America, as it was in the rest of the world, was about 35 years of age, as it had been for 2,000 years. We were an agrarian society, as we had been for 2,000 years. In America, limited government, and I believe in the unlimited potential of the American people. And in 200 years, life expectancy has doubled. We've gone from agrarian to industrial to a technology society. And the wealth, the creature comforts that we have here in America are beyond what anyone would have dreamed of, the science fiction novel. Imagine what we've done to transform the world for 2,000 years, nothing substantially changed. We, 
Clarence, three people, Timothy Duff, made all the difference. So I ask all of you, do what our founders, to step forward. This is the most important election of your lifetime. This is one that we will look back and say to our children and grandchildren, if you look at them 10, 20 years ago, Grandma, Granddad, what did you do? What did you do when America's freedom was on? You have a particular obligation to right the wrong here in the state of Illinois. <laughs> Greatest generation was challenged with a different challenge the threat of freedom. And they gave it all. Because it required We're not even asking for all. We're asking for I'm asking for 24 hours. Going out there, talking to your friends and neighbors. We'll be talking to folks here after, after I finish. Take pictures, put it up on your Facebook page, tweet it out. <laughs> Go to the grocery store, talk to your friends, take your signs, put your bumper stickers on your car, get on that phone tree, make a difference, stand for freedom. And if you do, we will nominate a conservative for president as Republicans. And if we nominate a conservative, we will defeat Barack Obama. <laughs> 